everyone welcome to my kitchen i'm chris and today we're going to be making carrot leek and tomato soup with tortellini i'm going to start by cutting up the leek and the carrots i'm not going to worry about being too precise because the soup is going to end up getting pureed so mainly I just want pieces that are small enough that they're not going to take a really long time to cook. I have nine carrots here and one leek. The tomatoes, I have two cans here of crushed tomatoes that I canned from tomatoes out of my garden this year. And we're gonna use that for the tomato base. I'm going to add the leeks, carrots, and tomatoes to the pot. I'm going to add a couple cups of broth. That's about two cups. I'm using chicken stock as my broth for this. You can use vegetable stock too if you want. Either one of them will taste wonderful with this. I'm gonna start this on medium heat. Going to add about a teaspoon of salt. About a quarter teaspoon of pepper. About a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. And a dash of red pepper flakes. If you're someone that doesn't like spicy, you can leave out the red pepper flakes. Or if you like really spicy, go ahead and add some more. You can make this any way you want. I'm gonna continue heating this until it comes to a boil and the vegetables here are soft. I'm gonna make some no need bread to go with my soup tonight. The recipe I'm using is not my own. It's from frugalfamilyhome.com. I will link it below. And I'm going to cut the recipe in half it looks like she uses a food processor to make her dough and I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna make it old fashioned way in a bowl. The first thing I'm gonna do is activate my yeast. So this is just warm water, a little bit above lukewarm. And I put my yeast, a tablespoon of yeast into it, and I'm just gonna let it sit and activate. So I'm gonna let it proof just to give it a little bit of a head start. I'm gonna let this sit for 10 minutes while it proofs, or if I see it kind of bubbling up and becoming really active before the 10 minutes, then I'll go ahead and start the dough. In this bowl, I have mixed three cups of water, one tablespoon sugar, half a tablespoon of salt and just mixed it in with my, my dough whisk. Our yeast is starting to proof. You can see that it's getting pretty bubbly. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour it in. This recipe also calls for a tablespoon of oil. I'm going to put a half a tablespoon in since I'm only making a half batch. A 
it doesn't specify what kind of oil you can use. So I'm using a uh, coconut oil. It's a coconut MCT oil. I'm gonna mix. I have a feeling since I am not using uh, the food processor, I think the way this recipe is set up that kind of replaces kneading. Since I'm not using one, I'm gonna go ahead and knead this bread. I'm going to just oil my hand. That's just olive oil in a little misting bottle just to help this dough not stick to my hands quite so bad. Let's see how this turns out. When you're kneading dough, you can tell if it's done by what's called the window pane test. If you can stretch this out thin enough that the light can go through, you know that it's ready. If it just tears, then your dough is not ready and it needs kneaded some more. I'm gonna take this bowl that I mixed it in. I'm gonna spray it with some olive oil. this in here and I'm just gonna make sure that it's coated on all sides so it doesn't stick. I'm gonna cover with the towel and it says to let this rise for 15 minutes in a warm place. I'm just gonna stick it in the oven. I'm not gonna turn it on or anything I'm just gonna leave it in there since it should be slightly warmer in there than it is at room temperature. Our soup has started to come to a boil. We're just gonna let that cook for a while. Um, it probably will take at least 30 to 45 minutes, I'm guessing. It's been 15 minutes and here is our dough. It doesn't seem to have really risen any, but it's only been 15 minutes. That's not a big surprise. This does, however, look nicely rested. The flour has soaked up all of the water it looks really, really nice. The directions here say to heat two to four cups of water to almost boiling. After this is risen, put the dough on a cookie sheet and score the top. Place the cookie sheet in the oven on the middle rack of a cold um, oven. It hasn't been preheated yet. Put a cake pan on the lowest rack of the oven and put the hot water into the cake pan. Close the oven and set to bake at 400 degrees. So this bread is gonna be sitting in here while the oven preheats. And then it bakes for 40 to 50 minutes. So what this, what's happening in this is the cake pan full of water at the bottom is creating steam. And that steam is going to help the bread rise. You want it to rise as much as possible before it starts to develop the crust because once it develops that crust, it won't rise anymore. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna place this dough inside this Dutch oven. I'm going to take a little bit of ice and I'm just gonna put it at the bottom. This won't in any way impact the dough the consistency of the dough at all. All it will do is help create steam within this Dutch oven. She said to score the bread. She said to put an X. Doesn't really matter, but X is good enough for me. So I'm gonna go a little bit deep. You see, it's about a quarter to a half inch deep. 
The reason for scoring bread, it's so that when it rises, the bread can expand out. If it doesn't have those scores in it and the bread starts to expand, then it will just crack. The bread is in, the Dutch oven is on, I only have two racks in here, so the Dutch oven is at the top one. I have it set for 400 degrees, it's preheating right now. I have a timer set for 40 minutes. So I will come and check on it in 40 minutes. It's been 40 minutes, my timer just went off. It's still very light. I would tap the bottom, but I'm pretty certain this needs more time. The recipe did say 40 to 50 minutes, so I'm gonna add another 10 minutes and check on it then. It's been another 10 minutes and I have taken the bread out of the oven now. See, this is what it looks like. It does look very nice. It did rise some, not a lot, but some, that's okay. Sounds nice and hollow. So I believe this is done and ready to go. We'll just set this up to the side to cool until our soup is done. Our soup is nice and soft. It's time to puree it up. Just have my, have my blender here. Pour this on back in. Let's do a taste test. See how it went turned out, see if we need to add anything. Mm. That is actually really good. That's even better than I thought it would be. I picked up tortellini at the store today because I knew I wasn't gonna have time to make it myself. It's okay to cheat sometimes. Just mix this in. The tortellini are just gonna cook in this. The directions say to cook for four minutes. So that's what we are going to do. It says if you want a softer tortellini, then you would cook it for five minutes. needs another minute to cook. It's not quite the softness that I want it to be at, but it's very close. Our soup is done. I'm just going to put some here in a bowl and then I'm gonna garnish it. This is some basil from my garden.
dust it with some Parmesan cheese. How lovely that looks. It looks beautiful. So here's our bread slice. The crumb looks amazing. I already tried it when I tried when I tasted the one of the tortellinis to see if it was done. So I know it tastes amazing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you want to be notified when I upload my next video, please consider hitting the subscribe button. And if you click the bell right next to it, you'll get notifications when I upload my next post. Thank you for joining me and making dinner with me tonight. I hope to see you next time.